Hey everybody and welcome back to Plastic Models by a Regular Dude and the Peter Person tribute build of the 148th scale Airfix North American P51D Mustang kit number A0 Five one three one. So where I left off last time, I'd assembled the wings, uh, put the gun um, inserts in, and am basically ready to go on the next step, which is filling in the seams, uh, all the panel lines and stuff that need to be filled on the wings. Um, for those of you who may just be catching this for the first time and haven't seen my earlier videos, uh, the reason I'm doing this is um, P51s, uh, were puttied and primed and then painted on the upper surfaces even the uh, bare metal aircraft uh, the wings weren't bare metal they were uh, primed painted with a lacquer type paint or some such and uh, so all all of the the uh, panel line detail with the exception of like removable panels and stuff like that needs to be filled in. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And I'm using these illustrations here that I got off the internet and I talked about my sources in an earlier video. So you can look at that if you want. Um, so basically this is the way it was done on the real aircraft is you had uh, a red velutine glazing putty applied over surfacer. Okay, so you had zinc chromate base coat then you had Acme Gray Surface number 53N5, usually up to six coats sprayed onto wing um, to fill in all that stuff. And then um, the uh, red Velutine glazing putty was used to fill in the heavier lines and stuff. So basically, that, you know, is complicated color looking thing this basically shows what is supposed to be filled in and what is left so basically the uh, these access panels here obviously the uh, fuel filler caps here um, this access point here and the access for the guns here and ammo here and it's like that top and bottom uh, access point here uh, one there pretty much everything else filled so that is what I'm working on. Now, what I've done so far is using Mr. Surfacer 500. This is what I'm trying to use um, because it's fairly easy to apply in a real neat manner uh, just using a brush. Um, you have to stir it once in a while and make sure that, uh, you know, everything is um, flowing properly. Clean the brush every once in a while because it starts to, you know, harden up. But just a regular old lacquer thinner will we'll work on that. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm filling them in. And as you can see, you can still see the ghost of the panel line in there because it settles in. But the nice thing is, is because of the thickness of it, once I sand it off, like I did right here to, uh, to test it, um, it's flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue filling this wing top and bottom get all that done and then uh, I'll come back and start the sanding process all right so here's the progress so far so this wing is pretty much done so what I did is as I showed I got the uh, um, putty filled it in wasn't too neat about it but uh, and then started sanding and then once I sanded it I cleaned it all up really good I used a brush and then I used some uh, just ran some thinner on it uh, to kind of clean up the panel lines and as you can see I've done some more sanding so there's still some more panel lines that have uh, plastic sanding dust in it the nice thing is it's just dust so it'll be easy to clean out with uh, you know some whatever you like to use for panel lines uh, you can use the end of a needle, you know, the, you can use a blade, exacto blade or scalpel blade turned backwards, whatever. But just make sure all of those are cleaned out. And if you get them too shallow, you can uh, get them back where they need to be. So, 
that's what I did. And the way the the method I'm sanding, I'm using uh, these little skinny sticks here, and uh, there's no grit on them. Uh, but uh, this is basically the way it is. Um, I got a blue and I've got the black. Now these sides here, I'm not using at all. These are really coarse. Okay, but the blue is a little bit smoother. Um, well, it's the smoothest of the ones I've got in this size. Uh, this one is a little more coarse, but not too aggressive. You don't want to be too aggressive because you don't want to sand into uh, the other detail that you want to leave. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm, uh, I've done it on here already, is I'll use this sander here. And basically I'll just kind of demonstrate it real quick. Sorry about the camera. I'll, okay, there we go. I won't rest my arms on the thing. Basically, I sand it down till it looks like just the panel line width of the panel line or uh, the the putty is just basically just in the detail that you're smoothing out which in this case is some rivets and panel line okay once you get it down to that stage which is what this is then I use I use the smoother one and then just go over it again to just to smooth out some of the scratches as you can see I'm protecting the lenses there of the, uh, the lights uh, this, is another, this is also the, the the time that you'd want to, uh, or I like to, sand the edges where the seam lines are. They need to be smoothed out. And then just keep sanding it. Sand out as much of the scratches as possible. Um, these sticks, they are cushiony, but not overly so, like this. So it gives you a certain amount of control without being super hard edged and cutting into the plastic. And then just keep going over all of that. The edges there, make sure you're getting everything good wherever you filled in. And then once you do that, then use the smooth one. This is a pretty smooth uh, grit, and this is a sponge. I like to use this one because it conforms really well to the curvature of the surface, and it gets a pretty good swath of um, the surface to smooth it out. like that. So the next step will be to kind of clean it up a little bit. I'll go ahead and you know continue working on this the same way. Get it all ready to show you how I clean it up. Okay, so here it is. Um, pretty much done for now. Uh, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to prime it. And uh, I'm going to prime it I need to scribe a line right there because I sanded some detail off I shouldn't have. But it happens. But anyway, um, it's all cleaned up. And what I had to do is once I got it all done, or so I thought it was done, um, I wanted to give it a double check. So I used my, uh, my magnifying visor and I checked very carefully all these seam lines. And some of them had uh, voids as well as some of the rivets. Now... If they have too many, uh, it can be problematic. But if there's a few, um, and if they're just really shallow, it's not as big a deal. Because if you look at photos of um, P51, some of them, especially restored ones, and you know we all know that they're not the best uh, way to judge uh, a kit or you know how something should look. But uh, since this is a uh, aircraft, you know, World War II air aircraft that's being used later uh, by another country. Um, it's something that, you know, you can consider and might be a little more, you know, realistic is uh, you can see um, 
ripples where the panel lines are that have been filled. Um, there is, uh, you can faintly make out the ghost of some of the rivets. So absolute perfection is not quite as necessarily necessary unless it's something you're just really wanting to do. So um, with that, I have to let this dry because I washed it in the sink to make sure that uh, all of the dust and everything um, is off. So I can't really do anything yet. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, prime this next um, apart from the aircraft or the fuselage because I want to see if there's anything I missed um, or anything that needs further smoothing. So I'll be making uh, some small masks for these three lights here because uh, I definitely don't want to be painting those. Um, so that is the ticket. So I'm going to let this sit for a few minutes and then uh, I'll make some masks for it and then decide what I want to do next. Okay, so I'm not actually going to show all of the priming process. I am going to show you which primer I'm using, which is uh, Gloss Black Vallejo Surface Primer, which works really well with their uh, metallic paints. So I'm going to use this, and uh, I'm going to spray um, all the areas that need uh, the primer. And see if there's any flaws or anything. So I'll do that. I'm going to use my single action Iwata uh, HPM2 single action brush. I think I said single action twice. Um, so I'll use this and get it sprayed and I'll come back and talk about what's going to come up next, if anything, and probably wrap this video up at that time. So I'll be back. Okay, <clears throat> here's where I am. After I uh, sanded everything down, I sprayed the Vallejo gloss surface primer that's made to work with the acrylic metal colors um, sprayed that on here and then I had to do some uh, sanding on that because there was a lot of scratches so I worked on that with one of these uh, ultimate modeling products soft mushy sanders use the coarser side first and the fine side uh, wet <coughs> and did a pretty good job there's some little bit of scratches, but I'm hoping it doesn't show up in the finish. But if it does, this is a learning process for me. And I just, <clears throat> excuse me, did the best I could uh, not knowing what I'm doing. So um, that's ready to go. So the next part in the instructions is to actually glue on the flaps in either the up or down position and the ailerons. However, I am going to actually glue the wing assembly onto the fuselage first. So <clears throat> I'm working a little bit on the fit. And this side here seems to fit really well and it really matches the, uh, the curve of this flange here. Fits really nice. Now this one here is not quite as good. Um, I did a little bit of trimming here to get this to sit flush, but this side it just seems to be a little high But I think it will be all right once I get paint because it doesn't seem to be it could be an illusion But it doesn't seem to be much of a step on the well. Yeah, it does hit there's a bit of a step So I'm gonna have to try and glue the front first and Then push that down and glue it <clears throat> I may have to use super glue to do that, but I want to get it to where <clears throat> it looks more like that side there. So I'm going to have to use, uh, I have to be, get a little creative, I think. Um, I might do a little bit of trimming back here and see if that will help. I mean, this back here may just need to be um, ground down a little bit to where it, uh, it fits a little bit better. But let me monkey around with a little bit and see what happens. Okay, here is the solution I came up with. Um, right here, where it contacts this place here, I put a little shim. Very thin. Don't know what size it was. You may not have this problem at all with your uh, particular kit. But as you can see, it is now a nice sweeping curve as it should be. 
So with that, I cut off this part here, did a test fit to see what parts of the wing need to be cleaned off once I get it glued in place and um, see how everything fits together, which fits together nicely. I'll just have to uh, sand this leading edge to make it smooth. So that looks pretty good. So the only thing I can see that's kind of concerning is this right here. Um, that seems to be kind of uh, kind of large-ish, so I need to determine if I want to fill that and rescribe the panel line, or, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that. I'm going to glue that in place, or when I glue it in place, I'll put a little bit of filler in there. Um, you know what, though? I could use, and I've done this before on other kits. Some really thin stock. Cut it pretty close to shape. Glue it in there. And then, uh, you know, before I put this on there, obviously. And then uh, sand it to the contour it should be. And then put this in place. And I should still have a bit of a panel line there. And I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'll demonstrate that when I do it. But for now, I'm going to uh, scrape paint off where it needs. Well, actually, I don't even need to scrape that off. I can just start gluing this into place. So I'm going to glue this in place here. And um, let's see where I need to glue it. See where the contact points are. You know, let me readjust my camera. It seems to be a bit close for what I'm trying to do in this particular case. Okay, that's a little better. So let's try that. So let's see. So it's going to go in there. So it needs to um, yeah, it needs to be glued there and there. So I need to sand that off. And uh, that should actually be pretty good. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So, I'm going to I think I'm going to scrape that off. So, I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to scrape all this uh, paint out to match that to give me a good contact point for the cement. Alright, so there that is. So, what I was saying I was going to do is I'm going to get uh, a piece of this right here kind of cut it to length I'll guesstimate it first and I have no idea what thickness this is I don't keep track of that stuff I'm a bonehead but I do want to make sure that the length is proper just a little bit more <laughs> I did this on a, uh, this can salvage some somewhat poor fitting kits if you're into that. And there's a lot of people, if it doesn't fit right, they don't want to mess with it. But there's a kit you like, and it just doesn't fit exactly the way you want. You know, with gaps and stuff, you can do this. And uh, it actually works really well. Whoa. Yeah, that's not going to work. So... Let's see. Trick is you don't want it to be too long. Okay, let's cut a little bit there. This is custom cut job here. Okay. So there's that. So I'm going to trim some of this off. Like that. And that looks pretty good right there. So let's see if I can do this without knocking it off. Oh, there we go. Using capillary action as opposed to capillary action, like I say most of the time, like a bonehead. 
make sure it's smashed down on there real good. Worst case scenario, if it didn't work, it was too thick, and you thought, oh, you know, I'd rather just fill it with filler. You can cut that baby off of there. All right, so I'm going to let that set up. That's going to take a little bit before I can start chopping on it. So um, got some paint scraped off there, and that's ready to go. So what I've done is I've used my... my uh, cutters here and cut it down as close as possible and then what I'll do is carefully sand it to match the contour of the fuselage once I get primer on it I may determine I need to do more but that's okay because that's what one of the nice things about primer but I shouldn't have to because I have done this before and that looks pretty good let's go this way got a little bit of a step so I can sand some of that down make it match a little bit better let's see what that looks like yeah it's a pretty snug fit so I'm gonna have to sand that down a little bit or um, let's get rid of some more of the lip on that side and make it right there like that. So let me sand away on that and I'll come back and show you what I got. All right, so there you can see I've got a pretty decent, uh, even panel line going all the way across so that's ready to glue on so I'm going to clear off some of my stuff here and then start gluing this together and I'm going to do it in segments because um, I wanted to I wanted to glue together right now fortunately all this stuff all these seams are on natural panel lines so uh, it's all going to be good um, I want to make sure everything's fitting together right. Looks pretty good so far, so good. Okay, so here we go. Let's start gluing this together. I'm going to glue this side first. Here. this first be careful not to touch where I spilt that glue hold that in place that's my granddaughter squawking in the background she's not very happy right now with somebody so I'm going to clamp this and let it dry and move on to the next side let's see yeah that looks good because it's got some got some glue oozing out there so that's good 
yeah that looks really good it's hard to tell because of the black and the and the uh plastic but okay that fits together really nice so let's go ahead and glue there And there, a little bit more there. And squeeze that together. So I'm gonna need a clamp on that. So we will let that dry. All right, so that uh, takes care of up to step 32 and 33. So that's pretty much the major airframe components. Um, so I think I'm gonna call it quits there so this video doesn't get too long. It's getting close to half an hour. So that is what we got going so far. So the next time when I come back, um, I'll do this sub-assembly here. And then I will work on the exhaust, drilling those out, hollowing them out so they look a little bit better. And then, whoops, from there, we'll be moving on to some of the uh, underside details. So, I'm going to call it right there. So, as always, I thank you for joining me here on Plastic Models by Raider Dude and the Peter Person tribute build of the 148 scale North American P51D Mustang by Airfix. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, or any of that kind of stuff, please put them in the comments section down below, and I will get back to you as quickly as I can. So until next time, I will see you all later.